Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I'm going to share with you how to design this poster in Adobe Photoshop. So let's go. So before we start I'm going to actually explain a little bit what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to start with creating this topography composition you see behind here and then we're going to create these glass rings. I, I know I told was the poster was in Photoshop, what I'm, it is in Photoshop because we're going to do everything else here like the post-production but these rings we're going to design them in Adobe Dimension. Adobe Dimension, I don't know if you know, it's like a 3D software from Adobe. It's pretty cool actually, you can do really cool things with it. If you don't have it installed on your computer, you can just click to the Adobe Creative Cloud in your apps and then you can just download Dimension. It's pretty great fun actually. I used it a few times already for client projects and it was like much easier than just going to Cinema 4D and set up an entire render there. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new document in Photoshop, which will be the, our poster size resolution. I'm going to use a 1700 by 2400 in RGB and just press create. Let's just name it something nice though, like poster. Just so you have a name, give it a name and then press OK. Let's start creating background. I'm going to use a adjustment layers here and then I'm going to use a solid color. I'm going to make it maybe bl full, full black today. Full black color, background, then press OK. Then I'm going to get my type tool. And I'm going to write what I wrote there, which is keep the type is black. So let's just change the topography color first so I can read it while I'm typing it. Okay, this is a very... Okay, I'll just, I'm just going to adjust that later. Maybe I'll just say now I have the kernings of this font really spaced for some reason. Okay, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. Again, this is like a self-inspiration code to keep me going doing what I'm doing on YouTube. It's not been, it's not easy, but I'm going to keep doing. And then just going to, oops, I just going to space. I'm using the alt and arrows to space the letters together like this, because I don't want it to be very spaced away from each other. And then I'm going to select the text layer, control or command T to scale it up. And then I'm going to scale up almost to the size of the artboard. Maybe we can actually change the weight of the font to something medium. See how it works. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep telling you that. Keep telling you this to yourself as well in whatever project you're doing. Even if you're just like learning graphic design. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's it. <laughs> anyway, let's just... Uh, the next thing we want to do is save this poster. This is pretty much that we're going to use this texture as you this poster with this topography we're going to save it and then we're going to import this as a background in adobe dimension so let's just go to file save as and then save it in your folder and press save and now let's jump to adobe dimension so here i already have like a adobe dimension set up a little bit this is like the render settings where you go just to export your frame but we can go to design as well i can just show you really really quick so here we're going to do this uh, new file and then go to new with settings. And then we're going to use the same settings we used before in Photoshop, 1700 by 2400. In pixels, centimeters, okay. This really doesn't really matter for what we are doing now. And press create. And then you will have this 3D Adobe Dimension hardboard. So what we're going to do first have a look first before you start. If you never touched or, or do anything in Adobe Dimension, just explore these things. They have like some tabs here with some elements, like basic shapes, models, so you can actually apply like textures into objects. And like they're like mockups, you can just apply your textures into these little mockups, which is cool. Then you have the material tabs here, loads of materials, and then light setups, which is amazing because it saves you so much time. And then background images in case you want to like make a design then implement on a city background or something and also some textures this is a really cool software i really recommend you explore it so let's click on the scene here and then click on, click on environment and then on environment we are going to remove the ground floor because we don't need it because when we start adding like objects here if we had a ground floor enabled our objects will intersect the ground floor and they're not going to be visible in our poster and because this is a 2D flat poster, we actually don't need this floor in our scene. 
if that makes sense. So cool, no floor and on the background we select yes and then click on this tab here and choose image. And now we're going to load our image we just designed in Photoshop. And now we're going to load the, our image we just designed in Photoshop. Press open and that's it. We have the same thing we did have in Photoshop, we have here now. And this is now where we're going to implement those uh, Taurus donuts graph, uh, glass things. So on those basic shapes here, we can just click on Taurus and you will have the Taurus in the middle of your scene. Actually added three Taurus on mine, I just need one for now. And then, cool. So this is a 3D object, as I expect you know. And then if you press E, it actually habilitates the moving arrow so you can move the object in the 3D space. If you press S, E opens the scale, so you can scale up and down your object. And R is for rotation, so you can rotate your object here. You can also make these uh, changes on the uh, position and rotations on this attributes panel here, which is cool. If you want to be more precise, this is much easier. And also scale it up. If I just press, because here right now, because I was scaling before, the scale is not really proportion. There's like one and then 0.8. Just gonna make sure it's proportional and then linked. Gonna just increase the size a little bit. So here we can actually edit our torus a little bit, like the radius. I don't want this to be a very long torus. And then the pipe radius, how oh, thick you want your pipe radius. And, and yeah, this is pretty much the things you can do here. And the first thing we want to do is actually just make a nice layout with this torus. Let's just move this around, change the rotation. Okay. And then keep keep using the shortcuts to select the rotation tool and the scale and and the rotation scale and position. That's it. <laughs> I'm gonna actually increase the size a little bit because I like when it goes really big and then actually goes a little bit offside of the screen. Be sure to to cover the letters, but not to cover so much that then we can actually see what's written there. Maybe use the scale to make this a little bit smaller. Something like this, and then I'm going to rotate it. And then make a new one. So I'm happy with this one. I'm going to select my torus again. And then I'm going to press E for position of the torus. If he lets me. Okay. Okay, let me. And then with the, the position one selected, I'm going to just press Alt and make a new copy. It works as the same as in any Adobe software. If you press Alt and drag it, it creates a new copy of anything you are selecting, which is cool. It's cool that they bring like shortcuts like from other apps as well, so it keeps your your ad a little bit free. Because if you like every app have different shortcuts, you start needing to remember all of these shortcuts, so you start like confusing them a lot. At least I do. Keep doing what you're doing, and then just keep rot finding a nice position for this. Just maybe like here, and then just rotate it so I reveal a little bit more of the end there. And still have the G showing, which is cool. I'm making like a totally different layout because it's hard to make exactly the same as I showed you. But I just want to show you the techniques anyway. Hold Alt. A, and then just drag it with Alt, make a new one, and just rotate this one somewhere here. Yeah. And again, try to make lots of rot variations on your object as well, so it makes it look really nice. When the glass, when we apply the glass material, when you have glass over glass, it creates really nice effects as well, so be sure to play with that. Like something like this. And then again, I'm going to make a new copy here and put it down somewhere here and then just play again with the perspective. I do think Adobe Dimension is a very powerful tool for like design this type of posters. I'm feeling there's a, a little bit empty here. Maybe I think we're going to move this one a little bit further and maybe scale it up so it's like a big chunk of the screen is taken there, but I still have 
because I was just afraid of the G there, so I still need to show the G a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. I think I'm much happier. Maybe if I scale this one as well, we'll do the job. Let's just do it really quick. Yeah, I can still understand it's a Y, so maybe I'll move it a little bit up then just for... Yeah. Most of the time, it's just playing around with the position of the elements, so you can create an interesting composition, but you don't lose the readability of the poster. Let's just scale this one up again. Yes. Let's just put it there. Yeah. I'll leave like this. Anyway. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be here the entire next half an hour just moving things around. So the next thing we want to do is just get our materials. So materials are like what the, the object is made from. And in our case, the, our object, it's made of glass. So just use the glass one. Don't need to do anything to it. Just drag it and drop it over. And you can see it starts already creating this really cool effect. Oh, we already have the, if you click on this tab here, normally it's off. But if you click here, it starts creating a really low res render, just so you can have like an idea what the final product will be, which is really cool. It's very useful when you're actually adjusting the layout as well and thinking about how the refraction of the glass will work against your design. Actually, see, like I was actually thinking there, it was the G wasn't very visible. And then I'm hoping here we can actually see the N there really nicely. Keep doing what you're doing. Also, we need to create some mystery in our poster, so yeah. So the material is applied, and then you also have a different uh, materials from Substance. Substance is like a, a platform where people build materials and then they can sell them and you can download materials. It's really nice if you're looking for something very specific, for sure. Also, again, just play around with this. It's really great fun. And now we're just going to add some lights. For, because this is a black and white poster, I don't want to add any studio with color color lights. So I'm going to keep a very simple one. I'm just going to get the studio like a black and white. Maybe the studio key and feel. This, these are like HDR images, which, which are images that already have light information in them and makes lightning in 3D much faster. So just double click it. And now as you can see, it's going to run it again. But this time it's going to use that image as the light source for the lights in our torus. Pretty cool, right? So, cool. I'm just gonna reduce the intensity of the light because I feel like when it goes too bright, then it damages a lot of the refraction. So I want to still have this really nice distort text on the torus because of the refraction of the glass, which is really cool. Also, you don't need to use a torus. I just use the torus, but feel free to use any other object. There is even a way to import things from Illustrator, but that's for another tutorial. Anyway, our poster is finished. I'm going to breathe a little bit and then we're going to click on render. So this is the render window. Here we're going to select the name for our poster. I'm going to name it poster again. Poster 01. Yeah. And then here you have three different types of render. Low, fast and medium. Which means like low will be not as good as resolution on your poster, and medium will be okay resolution, and high resolution will be slow, but the image will be look amazing. So if you have time, just do a high. And here you can export as PNG or a Photoshop. Photoshop 16 bits is more than enough, so leave it as it is. Then save somewhere we want to save and just press render. And then as you can see here, you're gonna start calculating the the high resolution image for our render. It's gonna take in consideration the lightning, the lighting we use from the image, and also the poster behind. We use the refraction and the refraction, refraction and the reflection, <laughs> sorry, from the poster behind. And yeah, it's gonna take a little bit, so I'm gonna just speed this up so you don't need to wait for me. I think it's gonna take up to 10 minutes. So yeah, I don't want to bother you just looking at the screen for that long. Oh, actually, it's going to take five minutes, but still a long time. I see you when this is finished. 
And yeah, it's finished. Took only five minutes at 23 seconds. That was enough for me to go outside. My vacuum cleaner was stuck with a cat toy nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> gonna. So if you go back to the place where you saved it, you can actually just open your Photoshop file from there. Just gonna open it really quick. And yeah, so this is our Photoshop file that we can that we get from Adobe Dimension. It's the same poster as before, like the background is the same if you just click here and we can, sorry, and then we can actually have a lot of adjustments here as well, like the Dimension creates this, this uh, material masks, which is really cool. Imagine you want to select this very specific shape there. If you click on this layer and then the magic tool, you select this color, which is really cool. And it's so much easier to do some individual color correction. And then you have the rendered image, which will be this one. And then Dimension actually creates a new one where it reduces the noise of the image, which is, which is amazing. Anyway, this is a file we get from Adobe Dimension and we are going now to add some adjustment layers. So let's start with the curves. I'm gonna add a little bit of curve because I really want this make this a little bit darker. These toros, I think they are really bright. But this is the power of post-production. We can always make something good better. Let's just make it darker, a little bit darker there as well. And yeah, I really I really like this much more. Let's just move this layer on the top so it affects everything. Yeah. I was feeling like because it was such a, it was very grayish, which is okay, but then we just make it darker. Everything a little bit darker looks nice. And also the contrast works much nicer as well. The next thing we're going to do is just another layer and we're going to fill it with black. And just if you press, if you have black and white here, you can just press Alt and Backspace and it fills the layer with black. And then we go to Filter and let's add some noise. Let's add noise. I'm going to use a monochromatic at 50% monochromatic noise. Press OK. And then the Supply Overlay. So I like the way the overlay works on the, on the darker colors. It really gets like this really nice noise on the darker bits. But then I'm going to duplicate this again using com Control or Command J to duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to change it to screen. So then you have, you, it kind of creates a noise overall, not just on the black little bits. And I just reduce the opacity here. And then, yeah, pretty much it. Let me just have a quick look on the poster I have done before. Just see if I'm missing something. No, just curves and adjustment layers. That's it. This is pretty much, this is it guys. Not pretty much it, this is actually it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I know it was like pretty fast probably. I don't know how long if we've been recording, but I just wanted to share with you how you can use this amazing Adobe, tool, Adobe tools to create these really cool graphics without even needing to go to Blender or to Cinema 4D to create a really nice 3D glass materials. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this poster today. And I hope to see you tomorrow because there will be another one tomorrow. And don't forget to like and to subscribe. Leave me a love comment in the comment section. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day and a good life. Cheers. Bye-bye.